Hey guys, this is the second out of three videos showing you how to use TV Paint to start an animated project. From storyboarding to a finished animatic. These three videos are taken from our TV Paint animation course, which covers so much more, including a ton of frame by frame animation lessons, special effects and more. Check out the full course at bloopanimation.com slash TV Paint Animation. And now part two, publishing your storyboard. So we've got a board all drawn out. And in this video, we're going to look at your different options for publishing storyboards. Go up to File, Publish. We have three different options. EDL is only really useful when you have your full animatic done. So let's look at the other two. PDF is probably the easiest format to share, so let's start with that. The first thing that you want to do is set the destination for your PDF and give it a name. Then you can add your copyright information, which will be printed out on the PDF. And if you have a logo you want on the boards, you can browse for it here. Then, if you plan on printing the PDF, you'll want to get the size of the paper, right? Then the page orientation, which probably depends on your layout orientation. You have Occidental, which is a fancy way of saying Western. That's the horizontal layout or Japanese, which is that vertical layout we saw. Then you can set the layout scale, which means the size of the thumbnails. That will affect how many panels will fit on a page. Then thumbnail view tells TV Paint how the board should handle clips with camera moves, or clips with stages larger than the camera. Full project size means it will basically look the way it does in the thumbnail view. The panel on the board will show the whole canvas, with a box inside showing the camera area and the camera moves. Camera variable size means the panel on the board will show what the area within the camera looks like except in the case of panels with camera moves. In that case it will be larger to show the whole canvas with the boxes depicting the camera move. Camera constant size is the same except to keep things consistent on the page, the panel area on clips without camera moves is scaled up to match whatever the largest camera move is. Camera means the panel will show what's inside the camera area and it won't try to represent the camera moves, just show the camera view from the first position of the move. This frame dropdown defines what image gets shown for a clip, if there's already animation in it. It can be clip current frame, which means whatever frame the playhead was last on in that clip. Clip frame in, which means the first frame, or it can be bookmarks. Let me show you what that means. If you go inside your timeline for a clip and right click up here, you have the option to add a bookmark, which will leave a blue highlight. You can add multiple if you want. Setting that frame dropdown to bookmark will make it use the bookmark you set as the image for the panel. And in fact, if you have multiple bookmarks, it will represent the clip with additional panels for each bookmark. And thumbnail infos can be either clip-related or project-related. This determines whether the time code that it associates with each panel on your published board refers to the clip or to the overall project. That time code is more useful after you've timed out your animatic. Then it will actually be accurate. Finally, over here, we have what text fields to show. You can include action, dialogue, or notes if you want. You can include hidden clips if you want. And you can have it show the color groups for the clips. When you've got things set, just click Publish. And here you have your board. Finally, let's look at the HTML publishing options. What this is going to do is export a folder of assets and an HTML file you open in a web browser. You can include multiple formats if you want, and they will, they will basically show the board exactly how it is in the project tab. You can even mouse over a panel to see the animation. So back on the publish window, you can see you browse to set the destination and name, fill in the copyright, add a link to a URL if you want, 
That's what the logo in the top corner will link to. And pick out some logos for the page if you want. You can use these clip background colors to set the color scheme for the panels. These are those weird eyedropper style color pickers. And here, you set the different views you want to include. You can also go to add a new style to create a new format if you're picky. Then you just click publish, which outputs the folder and HTML file, or publish for email, which puts the HTML file and asset folder into a single compressed archive file. That's more suitable for sending by an email. The recipient would then just have to download and unzip the file on their end to get the HTML file to open. That's it for storyboarding. In the next video, we'll take this board and make it into a full animatic. I'll see you there.